So hey everybody, this is a message to everybody out there who is a current homeowner with a mortgage in forbearance. What follows in this video is information ex specifically for preparing for when your mortgage loan is reinstated and you have to return to making payments. So stay tuned if necessary, you know, re-listen to any section that you don't understand. I'm going to break down exactly how to talk to your lender, what reinstatement options you're likely to see, and how to protect yourself and especially your older homeowner family members from being the victims of any type of scams that may come out. So I'm providing information on how to determine if you're working with somebody reputable um, as well as a wealth of other information. So take a listen, drop your comments with your questions, um, and I'll talk to you all soon. All right, everybody, it's officially time to get more in depth with the Protect Your Investment document. As I mentioned in the first video, I gave you a brief introduction to what's available here. Remember that this is specifically a document for people who are currently homeowners uh, and under a forbearance due to the quarantine and the pandemic dealing with coronavirus. So this is information for preparing for when your forbearance ends and knowing your options and knowing how to talk to your lender. So let's go ahead and go through it um, carefully. So most lenders will have information on their website right now about um, their options with COVID-19, uh, what is available to you. Um, so I do suggest clicking onto their website. Usually their homepage will have a disclaimer of some type and it will list what options are going to be available. Okay. Now, um, remember this, when it's time to have your loan reinstated, um, they're going to present you with the options that are listed on their website. And if you're not satisfied with what they're offering you, um, you should look into options for refinancing with a different lender. Uh, when that time comes, I'll try to get information because I will also be among that group of people seeking um, options for reinstatement. And I'm going to try to gather information from various lenders and from um, lending brokers that I know, mortgage brokers that I know, to get insight into who's offering the best options. And then I'll pass that information on to you. If you want that information, be sure to leave a comment uh, or send me a message so that I can add you to my calendar so that when that time comes, I'll notify you directly. All right, so let's look at this. So um, a lot of the lenders will have repayment plan options available. So some people will be able to maybe take the payments that you did not pay during forbearance and break those up into smaller payments um, and adding it on to the next month's payments, right? So if, for example, if you had three months of forbearance, you would take the three months amount, you would divide it up, say over a year or maybe three years, and it would be added onto your usual monthly payment. Some people will go for that option. Okay. Other people might have loan modification options. So let's look at what those are talking about. Your lender may agree to amend your mortgage. And here are some common ways to amend a mortgage adding all of the missed payments to the loan amount and increasing the monthly payment to cover the larger loan. What this means, instead of the repayment plan here, what this would do is take the full three months, say, or three to six months, however, however long you're in forbearance, they would take that amount, they would put it back into the existing uh, balance that you have, the existing principal, and then they would divide it again among the remaining months. So it's a, it's still going to increase your monthly payment, but this option is going to increase it by a lower amount. OK, um, this is another option here, giving you more years to pay off the loan, lowering your interest rate and are forgiving part of the loan. I'll be honest, I think very few lenders are going to forgive part of the loan unless it's really something where they're already maybe making a lot of money or maybe they've already made most of their interest. If you're someone who's been had your mortgage for longer than 10 years, maybe. But I don't see many lenders doing this because they're already losing money as it is while we're all under forbearance. But 
these other options, like giving you more years on the loan, that could possibly work out, especially for a borrower who is, is newer in their mortgage process. But for everybody, this is a good option. Um, it's one of the options that you could ask and say, look, um, if I missed four payments during forbearance, could we just add four months to the end of my mortgage? And that may be an option that your lender will accept. So this next one actually only applies to people who are on an adjustable rate mortgage. Um, now, these are the ones that very few people get anymore in the current situation due to what everyone learned about adjustable rate mortgages. And if you don't know, these are the mortgages that the interest rate can fluctuate uh, depending on the interest rate uh, set by the Fed. So if you have an adjustable rate mortgage, then you might have the option of moving to a fixed rate mortgage. Um, so you aren't exposed to the increases in the monthly payments that could arise um, after forbearance, especially considering how low the interest rates have gotten during forbearance, you might see an increase if you have an adjustable rate mortgage. For those of you who are unfamiliar with adjustable rate mortgages and you want to know more about those, drop me a comment. Just say adjustable rate mortgage. I will send you an article that explains when it's a good idea and when it's a bad idea to get one of these mortgages and how to make sure that you know what kind you're getting, what you can look for. I'll send you that article if you're interested. So just drop me a comment and let me know you want more information on that, how to make sure which type you're getting. Um, next, it says requiring amounts for taxes and insurances to be included with your monthly mortgage payment so you avoid big bills in addition to your mortgage. So this, of course, is dealing with the taxes and insurances that occurred during the forbearance period, because, as you know, the majority of us, especially earlier on in the mortgage, um, the taxes and insurances are actually held in escrow. Right. Uh, and then they disperse that to your insurance agent or and to your your parish government, um, you know, annually or biannually, however it is arranged. Um, so because we're not paying those amounts, you're, most of us may have to pay those in a lump sum, um, or they might take it and factor it into your mortgage payment, increasing the remaining months for the year, um, to make up for that difference, which is a very likely scenario for most of us, because they're going to have to make up that difference before your taxes and your, and your insurances are actually due. So that's something to talk about and ask them about that. Like, how much um, extra am I going to have to pay for my insurances and my taxes? Um, if anybody out there got the incentive check and maybe um, you haven't used it, this could be a great option for you to use that stimulus money to cover the, the, the taxes and insurances uh, when we come out of forbearance and you go into reinstatement. It's so very, very important. This next section is talk to your lender. So talking to the lender or loan servicer that collects the payments should be one of your first steps. So this document is just giving you information to prepare for what you should be asking. OK, but the first thing is talk to your lender. I've already spoken to my lender and asked them what options are there. Are they going to have available to me? Um, so I've kind of got a little bit of a handle on what's going to be um, accessible when reinstatement occurs. So you can have that conversation now. You don't have to wait for reinstatement. You can go ahead and prepare. And if you're like me, you want to be prepared in advance. OK, so um, we already know about forbearance. So that's what this is here. Uh, remember that forbearance does not erase what you owe. You will definitely still have to pay it. Um, reinstatement refers to making a payment that covers all of your late payments, usually at the end of a forbearance period. Now, this option requires that you pay all of it back. And that's going to be something that's not possible for the majority of us as borrowers, which is why you want to know about these other options available here. OK, so if necessary, go go back to that part of the video and rewatch how I explained it so that you can know what to ask. OK. Um, in the first video um, that I published, which was a summary, I went over the scams section here 
Uh, I am very, very, very passionate about blocking scammers because scammers are just annoying. I mean, we you got the no down payment people, the we buy homes people, we pay cash for houses people. They're scamming people out of the money they deserve. And these scam people will justify it to themselves and to other people saying, well, I'm providing you a service that you would otherwise um, not receive, or I'm giving you information that you would not otherwise be able to get on your own. And the reality is, everybody listening, real estate agents, you know, reputable banks with long standing histories in the lending industry have all the information that you need. So this is why as a realtor, I can tell you these things I can tell you you know, how much profit you deserve. I can tell you how much your property is currently worth. I can also tell you how quickly you're likely to sell based on the current market trends in your area. If you're a buyer, I can tell you about, you know, some of your mortgage options and I can direct you to a lender to get more specifics. You know, real estate agents and, and reputable lenders have the information that you need. And you are just, you know, everybody out there listening, you have all the opportunity before you. Don't let somebody come to you and paint you a pretty picture and say, hey, I have this no down payment loan that I can give to you or I'll pay cash for your house. Because chances are, if it's something where they're like, look, I got you, you're going to just it's it's a scam. OK, and you're not going to get everything that you deserve. When you work with someone who is a licensed agent or a reputable lender, you're working with somebody who is bound by a code of ethics and could get in big trouble if we do anything that's unethical. So please be wary of scammers. Um, and so this section I talked about in the in the first video, you do want to pay attention to um, don't get into a high risk adjustable rate mortgage um, where the payment rises after a teaser rate period. Um, there is a way to note. Notice it. It's going to be there's going to be an interest rate um, figure where it's going to actually have three numbers. Um, like I said, I can explain to you. I do have an article about adjustable rate mortgages. But instead of just having one number for the interest rate, you're actually going to see three numbers. And this dictates how much the loan interest rate can fluctuate and it can change your your payments drastically. Um, look for barriers to refinancing. Does Is there something in, if you're refinancing after forbearance? Um, do, is there something in there about prepayment penalties? Are there other barriers that are going to stop you? Let's say, for example, if in five years you decide you're going to refinance again, is there something that will stop you? You know, those are things to think about because you might want to refinance again in the future um, because maybe there will be a better interest rate than what you're going to get at the end of forbearance. So look for those things in the mortgage document. If there's a no down payment loan option, usually that means that they're actually going to create two separate loans and that one of those is going to likely have a lot more fees and expenses for you than the other one. Because basically the, the down payment is structured into a loan that you will pay. Um, and, but the way they structure it, they tell you, well, there's no upfront money, but you always end up paying more than you should. So be aware of this. There are better options. There are options that will take care of you because there are actually are lenders who truly want you to be happy. And so those are the ones you should work with, not with somebody who's going to try to rip you off. Um, definitely this last one, this goes not only for real estate, but this goes for any type of contract situation. Look for, uh, be wary of unethical document management, especially things where there's something blank and you're being asked to sign it because you don't know what they're going to add to it. And in the introduction video to this that I posted the other day, uh, I mentioned how to protect yourself. And so I'll restate it again. Um, if you see any blank lines on the document, um, you need to be aware of that. You need to block those lines out or tell them they need to block them out. You need to download the document as it is if it's impossible to block out the blank spaces. Um, make I, I suggest personally keeping a copy um, your signed copy, the way that you signed it. Don't rely on them to provide you with a copy. Take a copy of the document that you signed. If you're doing it digitally, if anybody doesn't know how to get a copy off of a digital signature um, form, let me know. Drop me a comment. I need to know how to sign properly digitally and how to get a copy of it for myself. I will teach that to you. I will send you the information 
Um, I don't have an article on it yet, but I will very, very soon because this is going to be very critical for a lot of people. So the thing to remember with this, as with anything in life, is there are lots of people who are doing good business. Um, and there are lots of people out there with good intentions and good options for you who are going to offer you the things that you deserve. And then, as always, there are going to be some people whose intentions are not so good or who will try to, you know, trap you into a situation where they're coming out making lots of money off of you and you're losing money. Um, that's the reality. And so it's important to have someone as you're growing your financial situation, as you're, you know, you have your real estate, it is like your retirement investment. Maybe you're an investor, you're growing your investment portfolio. These are things that are beautiful and wonderful and empowering for every household that takes that step. And what you need is to have somebody on your side that you can trust to help you build that that real estate portfolio and that investment portfolio and knowing that you're not going to be taken advantage of because you shouldn't have to pay more just because someone else is trying to make extra profit off of you. And you definitely, when you sell real estate, you deserve to get all of the profit from it. Everything that it is worth, you deserve to get that. You should not have to worry about somebody telling you they're going to pay cash for a property and then you don't know what it's valued at because you've never spoken to an agent to get an actual understanding of it. Um, and you you could be losing a considerable amount of money and you might get told, well, I'll give you $80,000 and $80,000 sounds really, really great. But what if your property was already worth 150000 and this person knew it? So if somebody's coming to you with a situation like that, it's because they know that they can gain a lot more than $80,000 if they buy that from you. And so that's something that you should keep in mind. It, whatever that person is offering you, that means that your property is probably valued at way more than that, whatever they're offering you. So keep that in mind. If you're interested in more information, as I mentioned, between adjustable rate and fixed rate mortgages, leave that in a comment. If you're interested in finding out how much your property is worth right now, um, send me a message or drop me a comment and say, you know, property valuation. I will give you a free property valuation, tell you about average range, um, how much you could probably get if you sold your property. Um, if you want a more detailed report, we can talk about that because there are more details like how long will it likely be on the market? Um, you know, what is the process like? We could talk about it also with coronavirus. What are the steps that can be taken to protect you and your family if you decide to sell? Um, we can talk about all of that. There's definitely some measures in place um, and I can explain those to you, how we can um, reduce the amount of exposure that your home has to other people, drastically reduce it. Things like having like video tours instead of having people come view the property. Um, and we can talk about that more if you're interested in getting a property valuation and what the process would look like if you did decide to list. Um, if you're interested in going after maybe some, you know, vacant land or investment, um, you want to build and buy additional properties, let me know also. I'll look at what your options are, go over it with you, talk about your plans, and we can strategize for how to help your family grow your real estate wealth and your investment wealth. So back to the document. Um, it says here, realtors can help. Realtors are in the business of helping people become homeowners and want to do everything they can to make sure you can afford to stay in your home. You know, we, we don't just want you to buy the house because that's the point at which we get paid. We want you guys to be able to stay in your house because, you know, home ownership is a big, big portion of our economy. And the more people that own homes, the stronger the economy is. It's been proven. OK. So if your current lender isn't willing or able to help, you may be able to refinance your current mortgage with another lender. Realtors may be able to help you find responsible lenders that make fair and affordable loans because we work with lenders all the time. So we already know a few options for you um, of someone that we trust and that we've seen do good work. And as you can see here, the document also goes in on the cash for houses situation. Uh, we be wary of advertisements like cash for houses 
any situation or we buy houses for cash. Uh, these may be scams that bait homeowners with the promise of rescuing them from imminent foreclosure. Um, talk with a realtor if you determine that selling your home is your best option, simply because we're going to ensure that you get the full value for your property. You should not receive anything less than the full value. And that person who's coming with the cash for houses says, well, I can, you know, I'll buy it right now and you don't have to worry about the mortgage anymore. And so immediately it's like, oh, they're taking away this worry from me and it's taking away this burden. But the reality is that you could potentially sell it for a lot more than that. And way before you would be at risk for anything like foreclosure. And also remember, most of you will be perfectly fine. Majority of people out there will be perfectly fine reinstating their mortgages. Your lenders don't want to lose you as a customer because they 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 make more money if you keep your house than the reverse. So most of you are going to be fine. Just relax. But if any of you decide that you want to sell, you just don't want the house anymore for whatever reason, work with a real estate agent. Do not trust anyone who's trying to offer you cash um, for your property. So the last page provides counseling resources. So um, it looks like mostly here, though, this is about um, the HUD website. Um, you can also check out HUD.gov slash counseling um, to locate, you know, counselors in your area. You can also call HUD at this number. Um, they can give you information on approved HUD approved counseling organizations so that you can stay away from people who are going to try to take advantage of you um, through a difficult time. And so that's what the purpose of this video is, is to avoid that. I definitely want to avoid that for everyone listening. Um, watch out for questionable companies who advertise that for a minimal fee. They will assist homeowners by hiring a lawyer to defend the foreclosure in court or negotiate assistance on the borrower's behalf. You should contact a HUD approved counseling organization before you pay or sign anything. Even if they say that they're HUD approved, you need to, to double check that. Check with HUD.gov slash counseling. Make sure that you're only contacting organizations there. If someone is contacting you and offering these services or there's an advertisement, there it's likely that they're not reputable. Especially communicate this with older homeowners. Please communicate this with older homeowners because they are more susceptible to believing someone. You know, if someone comes through looking a professional type of way um, and they talk real smooth and it's like, you know, I understand the situation. We are a HUD approved counseling, blah, blah, blah. And then they're going to set, set the stage for it. Older older borrowers are more likely to fall victim to that. So please share this with your older family members to prevent them from being um, taken advantage of. You have options. You should not. Um, you should make sure that you're getting reputable assistance. So checking HUD.gov/counseling can ensure that you're finding um, an organization to help who authentically is approved and reputable. So if you have any questions about this information or anything else dealing with real estate and investment, be sure to drop that into a comment. If there was anything here that was unclear, be sure to just send me a message, drop me a comment, ask your questions. Uh, let me know what it is that you need to know more about. So uh, remember, a good thing to do is just prepare for reinstatement. Go ahead and get your options now. Look at your lender's website first. Call your lender second. Um, ask them what they are going to make available to you. There may be some differences depending on how long you've had the mortgage, you know, um, or maybe everybody will get the same thing. It's going to depend on your lender. Get those answers now. So that way, between now and the time that you have to reinstate, you'll know if you're going to stick with your lender or seek refinancing options. Talk to you all soon.